Yeah, as she said, uh, my name is Dustin Hines, and I'm an ap application engineer here at Samson. Um, today we're going to be talking about abrasion, and most specifically uh, looking at that inspection tool that's focused on the Ansteel Blue product. And so, in this uh, discussion, uh, no, maybe there we go. In this discussion, um, we're going to start out by looking at uh, reasons people use HMP rope and what what an HMP rope is, um, and then uh, why we developed this tool and what the motivation was, followed by uh, an investigation on uh, a discussion on how we developed the tool and uh, what we compared it to, and then a discussion on the results and the correlation to strength based on the ranking of these ropes. Finally, a, a quick summary on how to use the pocket guide in the field. So there are many advantages to uh, homologous polyethylene ropes. The most obvious one is size for size, you're looking at the same strength as steel wire rope at significantly lower weight. Um, these weight savings help in a variety of industries um, and applications, providing better handling and payload increases, especially in marine industries where you're looking at a, um, a specific gravity less than one, allowing the rope to actually float. You also have a very high chemical resistance due to the chemical inert properties of polyethylene, um, which further increases the number of applications this product can be used in. Um, the way the uh, polyethylene is actually made uh, is you, you take the, uh, these long chemical chains and align them so that all of the strength is in one direction, providing very high strength for low weight as compared to steel, which has strength in all directions due to its high isotropic properties. Um, one of the issues that this can bring up is that as opposed to steel, which is strong in all directions, the synthetic fiber um, is susceptible to wear. So the motivation for this investigation is the, a question that we get often, when do we retire a rope? And the obvious answer is before it fails, um, but it's much more difficult to actually determine that without cutting the rope life too short. You're always trying to optimize the amount of time that you can use the product um, safely without risking a failure. Um, with this product, there are few to no non-destructive test methods, which make it very difficult to actually determine how much strength is left in your rope without loading it up on a test bed and pulling it to break. Um, once you've done that, you know how strong your rope is, but you can't use it anymore. And the reason for the lack of non-destructive testing methods is the, the complexity of the material in these ropes. Um, we have a large number of discrete filaments in each rope. If you're talking about um, something on the, the order of a one-inch diameter rope, you've got over a million discrete filaments in there, which makes it very difficult to go in and count which ones are actually damaged. Um, it's not very practical to go in and count, oh, well, I have 200,000 filaments damaged, it's time to retire this rope. You also have a lot of complex interactions with these different parts, um, you have the complexity of the material, being a viscoelastic material, and then you just have numerous different failure mechanisms and, and modes of um, wear. So what we wanted to get, bring out of this was a repeatable way to quantify um, damaged rope and, and the strength that that correlates to. Depending on your application, there are a lot of different wear modes you might be interested in. Um, if you're looking at a situation where you have um, high loads for an extended period of time, where you're leaving the rope under constant tension for months and years, then you might be interested in uh, creep and how that's affecting your rope. Um, if you have a small diameter rope that's sitting outside for years at a time, uh, UV degradation might be an issue for you. But across all applications, um, mechanical wear and abrasion is going to be uh, an issue. It doesn't matter if you're uh, dragging this rope um, from one site, part of a job site to another, or whether it's repeatedly traveling through shivs or um, across steel surfaces, you're always going to have this mechanical wear uh, possibility. So abrasion damage is the leading cause of failure in high modulus polyethylene ropes. Synthetic ropes are 
damaged and uh, will then fail due to this abrasion if it's not looked after and mitigated. Um, this can be broken up into two types of abrasion. You have external abrasion where the rope is actually running um, across or coming in contact with another service, surface or body. Um, depending on how you have this set up, it could be a, an abrasive steel surface or um, anything really. And so as you're using this rope to limit this, you want to mitigate this, you want to limit the frequency of contact or um, have it be at under low loads. But no matter what you're doing with the rope, it is going to develop some external abrasion. You're going to have contact with things. The rope's not going to be floating in a void. Um, you also have internal abrasion, which is um, interactions between the strands inside the rope structure. This can be very prevalent in applications where you have a lot of bending, where those rope strands are moving across each other, um, changing lengths with respect to one another uh, repeatedly over and over again. And the rate at which this damage develops can be increased if you have a, a high amount of particulate inside the rope, if you have a lot of dirt and uh, abrasive particles that get inside the braid. That can increase. So you, Mitigating that as much as possible will help with this abrasion. But again, both of these types of abrasion will develop as you use your rope. So trying to look at how we're going to develop an inspection tool uh, to help people better know when to retire their ropes, we looked at developing a visual uh, comparison. One of the big issues that we have is communication of rope wear. Um, depending on who's looking at the rope um, and what application they're talking about, you can have p different people meaning different things when they say a rope is highly abraded or it's uh, mildly abraded. Depending on who's making the inspection, those can be very different things. So we wanted to actually provide a tool that you could put a number to an abrasion line. This is very similar to a surface roughness comparator that's used in a variety of industries. Similarly, it's very impractical to go in and measure um, the actual height discrepancies in a, in a rough surface or in any kind of surface that you're trying to um, put a value of roughness to. But what you can do is you can manufacture a, a, a scale of different surfaces that have those uh, RMS values that you're wanting to set to the surface you're investigating. And then through tactile contact with your finger, um, you can go up and just decide which one it's closest to. Um, rubbing your finger across the surface, you can say, well, it's not quite as rough as this 200, but it's a little more rough than 120. And, and now you've, you've been able to put some kind of number to this thing that's very impractical to actually go in and measure. So looking at the scale, we, we try to do the same thing. Um, we went back um, to a bunch of field used ropes that we had returned and uh, developed a scale of seven uh, different levels of abrasion that can develop in different applications and really try to show the whole spectrum of damage from a one up to the seven where your rope is practically falling apart. Um, we also chose seven levels uh, to, to keep the incremental steps different enough that you don't have a lot of difficulty in deciding, well, is this a two or a three um, on, a, on a 20 picture or 20 image scale? That might be very hard. Those ropes might look very similar. But in this one, you can actually start to see, well, I, I am starting to get some, uh, some broken filaments on the surface that look more like a, a three external. My internal wear is, is closer to a, a five than a six, not quite that bad. Um, so just based on the level of damage, and the, the steps between them. Uh, we also did, as you can see, both the internal and external uh, because these can develop in, at different rates and different applications. And so you can go in and, and really open up the braid of the steel blue and, and decide how damaged the internal strands are and look at the outside of the rope and decide how, how bad the external damage is. So once we had developed this comparison tool, um, we went and gave the tool to some, some of our rope experts, and had them compare it to uh, field-used ropes that have been returned over the past five years. 
Um, and for our MCL Blue product, we had 200 of these samples that we could investigate. Um, they all had the same construction, were used in similar applications, um, and had various levels of wear all across that spectrum. However, we had to disregard three-fourths of them uh, due to other uh, wear mechanisms being present. Uh, to really try to make a correlation between the strength due to abrasion damage and the loss of fiber from, from that mode of damage, wear mechanism, anything that had, or any samples that had cut strands present, um, melting, or excessive twist, or any other type of wear present, had to be disregarded. So that really limited our, our pool to look at. From that point, we, uh, we correlated to the residual strength. And with these return samples, they were inspected, they were documented, and then they were pulled to break to see how much strength was left in the rope. So we had our, our six experts compare this tool, uh, or use this tool to compare these ropes, and rank both the internal and external damage for each sample and then look at what kind of strength we're seeing for ropes that were abraded to a certain level and, and the abrasion was the only damage that you could see and distinguish. So what did those results look like? Well we were able to collect 300 data points and um, each of these data points had both an internal and an external value uh, based on this scale. Uh, this, these were determined looking at the worst wear section and um, and determining and making a determination based on where the most damage was so if, if the whole length of rope was like new if it's brand new you're looking at a two on that abrasion scale for most of the length of rope but one section is is the most severe that was the one that we had graded um, and tested from there, um, we group these into three separate categories. Um, so you were looking at basically with the, the way you could grade this, you would have 49 possible different combinations, whether it was a 2 on an external and a 7 on internal or any of those combinations. As you can see in this table, you were looking at uh, a wide number of spots. But we grouped them into these three categories, the dark blue, light, and white which on the scale are the, the green, yellow, and red, one, two, three, four, five, and six and seven. And this allowed us to do, um, A, it makes the, the process much more simple, uh, straightforward. You don't have to really nail down exactly what, what number you're at. You can kind of get it in the, the grouping. Um, and also it, it allowed for more data points in each um, bin for better statistical analysis. Um, what we see here is that you definitely do um, see a decrease in strength depending on the uh, visual appearance of the rope and the numbers actually correlated quite strongly. Um, with a 90% confidence you can say if your rope has been ranked at a 3 internal and a 5 external abrasion level you have at least 60% of your original rope strength remaining. That begins to, to put a number to uh, what your strength is just by looking at your rope and, and, try, and putting a number there based on how it appears. So the way that this pocket guide can be used, um, due to the strong correlation between the visual appearance and the rope residual strength, uh, you can go out and have this guide in your pocket, whoever's actually out handling the rope and using it pull it out and lay it out right next to the rope in the field. Um, and with that, just lay it out next to it, decide what level of abrasion your rope is at, um, put a number to it, and depending on what decisions you make, depending on your application and who's using the rope, what it's being used for, um, each individual user can set up their own level where if, if the rope reaches this point, pull it aside and either retire it or allow an expert to take a look at it. This also improves communication. Um, if you have a, a rope sitting out there and you don't know whether it should still be used in a particular application, you can with a high confidence say, 
my rope has X amount of abrasion damage, should this still be used or should it not? You can actually have communication with, with an expert at that point. So this tool will hopefully um, improve the use and uh, what kind of safety you can have while using this rope in a variety of applications. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions? So you do have the opportunity on the lower right part of your screen to type in a question if you have one for Dustin. Um, so we can go ahead and give you a couple of minutes to, to ask any questions you might have. Um, thanks, Dustin. That was great. We'll also be making this um, webinar recording available for viewing later um, for those of you who might have had to step away or if you um, and want to share it with someone else that you know, um, we'll be able, we'll post that shortly and make it available. Okay, it looks like we have a question. Uh, does this work only for Amsteel Blue? Uh, how do we measure other ropes? That's a great question. Um, the strength correlation that we've done at this time uh, is only on Amsteel Blue based on the ropes we've looked at. However, you can use this to communicate what your rope appearance is for any product, any uh, single braid product. Uh, at this time, we don't have anything for a double braid and the strength will obviously be different if you're comparing your uh, your abrasion level, if you're looking at something like a, a quantum with the DPX fibers or, or something like that, different ropes will have different strength correlation, but you can still use it as a communication tool. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So we'll go ahead and end the session for now. If you do have further questions, feel free to send them um, through to the contact information you have there at customer service, attention, uh, Dustin or Amber regarding the webinar, and we'll be happy to get back with you and answer questions at that time. So thanks again for joining us, and have a great weekend. Thank you.